I now call this meeting of the Amateur Detective Club to order. I'm Melissa Maley, the spy. I'm Tyler Riley, cop and a half. And I'm Twisted Bill, the saucy spoof. <laughs> Today's show is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash adcpod and browse the unmatched selection of audio programs. Oh, <laughs> uh, can I give a recommendation? Please? Wait, I'm not done with oh. the ad yet. Download a title free and start listening. It's that easy. It is that easy. Go to audibletrial.com slash adcpod. Pod. Oh my God, Tristan, give your recommendation, please. <laughs> It's uh, Tuesday. It is almost 8 p.m. And I'm feeling a little loopy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, There's this great book by Adam Minter, who previously penned the book um, Junkyard Planet, all about the recycling and scrap industry. And uh, there's he just came out with another one called Secondhand about uh, thrift shops and Goodwills and stuff like that. Uh, there's also a great um, free audio book. If you have a membership, you get two free audio uh, audible mm. <laughs> exclusives. And caffeine is one of them. It's about coffee. It's very interesting. It's only two hours. It's nice. I'm sorry, Melissa. I was being a jerk. It's okay. I guess I forgive you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. What are we talking about today? I'm sorry. Are we not going to address <laughs> what <laughs> the baby voice? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes twisting the little baby. <laughs> We're discussing the big bonanza. <laughs> we got a fight. Did we pick a little fight bonanza. Do you remember the show Bonanza? Uh-huh. I do remember Bonanza. Okay, the big bonanza, which yes. is not. Bonanza. It's not, yeah. It's not Bonanza. But it's but the it's title of the episode of... The number one ladies' detective <laughs> agency. Yeah, We're back. Yeah, uh, so the synopsis I have says that it is... And I did watch the episode. I just have this for reference. Uh, but the... <laughs> All of you judging Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> but exactly. Uh, I'm not here for it today. Uh, but it says that it's actually season one, episode one. Mm. Which uh, yeah. I can explain. Uh, the original pilot that we covered last February was intended to be a standalone t- television film. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so after that, like kind of backdoor pilot TV movie, this would be like the first like proper episode. It opens on... Uh, What looks to, we don't see officially, but it looks like a baptism Mm -hmm. is taking place. Oh, yes. Uh, And this man is being held under the water. And then all of a sudden, you see him start to struggle in the water. And then, credits. We get the opening credits. (laughs) (laughs) Can I tell you, I love these credits. The songs, it slaps. The the animation, mwah. And I like where they point where... (laughs) Yeah, where, where the uh, Haparomi is. Yeah, because I was like, I don't, as an ignorant white person, I have no idea <laughs> where this is. <laughs> Please help. And it did. And I learned something. And then next we see uh, Mama Kutsi on the bus on her way to work. She has these uh, little pink leaflets mm-hmm. in her lap as she makes her morning commute. And you love gets, to see it, folks. Yeah. <laughs> and she starts queen. getting uh, teased by uh, some of the other mm-hmm. bus riders mm-hmm. who see her leaflets for the number one ladies detective agency and kind of give her a hard time about, you know, like, you p- can't possibly be a detective. And she's like, not everything is shoot, shoot, bang, bang, like you see in the movies. And I'm like, so good. Which, <laughs> very, which reminded me of that episode of Poirot as well. Yeah. <laughs> where they go to the cinema. <laughs> Uh, and at one point, they like pretend to start shooting at her, and it's very rude. And I didn't. No, they like shoot it. at each other. Each other, yeah. yeah. It was still very rude, it's, and I didn't. It, yeah. Oh yeah, no, it was like, not. I didn't like it. It made me scared. <laughs> stupid young men being stupid young men. Yeah, you mm. know. Mm. There's only you so know how stupid you young do. men be. Yep, I, I do. do. <laughs> <laughs> I do know how a stupid young men be. I believe next we just see her walking into the office. Yeah, to, very linear. Yeah, meet uh, Ma Ramatsui mm-hmm. in yes. her office. 
Well, Mauro Matsu calls her into the office yes. to be like, I need you to make an appointment for me to go to the dentist. Yeah, and Mama Kutsi is very confused because Mauro Matsue hates the dentist. Yes, and she's like, you don't have a toothache? Why? Why? And she's very nurturing. She's like, mm, what? <laughs> I don't... Tr- mm? Are you okay? Yeah. Mm? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but she's like, no, do it, and do it under this alias. And she's like, aha, it's a, a business thing. And she's like, no, it's a favor. Yeah. Yeah. But we also get, you know, some shades of Agatha Christie in these opening, uh, in this in this scene. So we get our first little bit of xenophobia. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that the dentist oh. she's going to see is a Nigerian dentist. Oh, yeah. And Mama Kutsi is not here for Mm-mm. it at Mm-mm. all. No. It's like, you know, he, he could drug you, and then, you know, and she's like, and then what? And there's this beat. She's like, T- take the things out of your purse. <laughs> 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 she's like, just do it. So she makes the appointment. She does, and as soon as Mama Kutsi goes in the other room, Maromotswe is, you know, trying to talk herself into it. She is clearly very, very nervous and mm. putting on a brave face. Um, yes. And then do we get the delightful child? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. But we do get Mama Kutsi coming back to Maromotswe and we're like... Okay, your appointment is at 4 p.m. today. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, what? Your appointment is at 4. <laughs> oh, an hour, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she's like, what? She's like, you said as soon as possible. It's, no, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, and then we get the adorable child, right? Yes, I believe yeah, so. Yeah, this very young man, this very young boy. Looks yeah. Looks to be about eight. Yeah. Um, he's like, give me a job. <laughs> she's like, no. Yeah. But she's like, please. Then Mara Motswe comes in and is like, okay, give him a job. Have him pass out the flyers. And she's like, fine. And then they, they do that. And he's very enthusiastic about yeah. it. He wants a job very badly. Yeah. Yeah. And he has to read for it. And it's like a cute little scene. <sighs> yeah. It's a really cute choice that uh, the kid makes. <laughs> she's like, you're too short you're too little and he's like i'm big for my age and he starts jumping up and down to make himself taller it's very cute <laughs> yeah yeah uh his but... name is wellington oh, wellington. Yes, wellington yes yes so uh so he kissed the job and he starts handing out some flyers for them Mm-hmm. and then we go to where do we go is it the, the office is it the dentist or the dog it's the dentist. Okay, we go to the I'm dentist. Sure, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she speaks, uh, Mara Mosque speaks with the receptionist, and uh, <laughs> basically the reception's like, some days he's great, some days he's terrible, and there's there's no reconciling it, and it's strange and frightening. Today, and she's like, is he good or bad today? And before she can answer, she gets called into the dentist's office. <laughs> yes, but leading up to this, the reason they have to speak so quickly mm. is there is a woman with... Very few teeth in her mouth that goes in. Mm. And the receptionist makes a remark. We have to speak very quickly. (laughs) This woman does not have that many teeth. (laughs) It's very funny. (laughs) Oh, I somehow missed that. That's delightful. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And she actually Uh. comes out looking like she's gotten some good veneers put in or something. Does she have more teeth? She has more teeth when she comes out of the office. So it does seem like he's having a good day. Mm-hmm. He's, yeah, yeah, if you don't leave your dentist's office with more teeth, you're doing something <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I have 52 teeth in my mouth. <laughs> Sarah, I'm going to have to cut you off. There is a, I mean, like a diminishing returns here. Like, at a certain, you want a certain amount of teeth. You know, you want approximately <laughs> a certain amount of teeth. And, <laughs> Way, way more teeth or way fewer teeth. Not a great situation. I'm sorry, you're right, Melissa. There's diminishing returns on stuffing your face full of extra teeth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. oh I got me, my God, my tears. Oh. <laughs> I'm just 
image of a man with his like jaw unhinged and just like shoving more, more teeth. <laughs> and if you ever think about that teeth or bone, anyway, yeah. um, I do every day. You can't stop tasting bones. So she's in the dentist's chair, mm-hmm. and she's doing okay. Um, and she just needs like some, so. something like little, like a little scrape or something, and that's it. And it goes perfectly fine. She has a fine dentist out um, visit, and she's kind of like buh at the end of it, and she's like, okay, no. so I'll have to come back. Yeah. No, uh, no. Just it's trailing. Mama Kutsi who yeah. is like, yeah, you have to go back on a day where he's having a bad day. And yeah. she's like, no, 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 no. She's like, no, no. no da, da, da. Ugh, okay. And then they get a, a guy comes in, right? Yes. With a flyer. Yeah. About his dog. But like the way it unfolds. is so this silly. This man comes in and starts talking about his large wife and how much he loves her. And mm-hmm. it's I like really sweet. Wife. And he's like, take a look at this photo. And she's like, yes, you have a, you have a very lovely wife. Is is she, is she missing? He's like, no, take a closer look. And she looks at it. And she's like, is, is the dog missing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, he says, like, what's next to her? And my first thought was, like, the tree? Is the tree gone? What? <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? Yeah. yeah, the dog is missing. His name is Lucky. Yeah, he lost him at the shopping mall. Aww. Very sad. Yeah. So uh, Marumotsu is like, no, we don't do dogs. And then Mama Kutsi yeah. comes yeah. in, and she's like, we do, but this dog doesn't look happy, so we have to charge you the full unhappy dog fee. Oh yeah, that's very cute. <laughs> Which uh, that made me laugh out loud. <laughs> Uh, there's this thing I do when I really like a joke, I will laugh and then I will repeat the joke and that is what happened there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and then is that the sequence of them like searching for the dog right away or does she camp out first? Does she camp out? Does she stake out the, the dentist? Oh, no. no not right yet. Yeah, sorry, okay. you're right. Uh, mm-hmm. We get this like montage of them like... Looking for the looking, dog. Looking like uh, Mara Matsue and Mama Kutsi are looking for the dog. Wellington is still out there <laughs> trying to flyers. hand out the flyers. And like nobody's really having much success. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, the scene hurt. Uh, Mama Kutsi is like, sees the dog, is under this table, like trying to get its attention, trying to catch it. Dog runs off. And- Clearly has never tried to catch a dog in her life. In her doggone life. <laughs> Barking up the wrong tree. Oh, yeah. boy. Oh, boy. Uh-huh. But also, like, how many times, like, are you expected to catch a dog? Like, nobody's, like, really trained to do that except for, like, dog catchers and, like, animal control. And, like, if you're, you want a dog. So she's clearly never had a dog in her well, life. Well, no, I... You know how I've to had dogs, but like sometimes, like they think like being like out is a game, and it's like, uh huh. Mm, that's what Romeo thinks. Yeah. Mm. That is why my deaf dog can never be off leash because he'll be like, "Oh, I'm gonna run into the street. It's gonna be real fun." Yeah, so it's very hard to catch. <sighs> they are hard to catch. That's why you got to get those professional dog catches. Yeah, I uh, I rescued someone's <laughs> Which is dog. What Urban Empires is about. I'm sorry. Continue. <laughs> I rescued someone's dog. <laughs> what? But, yeah. Um, it wasn't, like, very dramatic. It was running kind of towards, clearly, like, ah, very happy dog. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had video of that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she waved her arms in a Muppet-like fashion. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. But the dog was just playing, like, oh, you know, it's, mom got uh, lost the leash and she's like can so you know can someone uh-huh. please help me yeah. i stepped on you know at first i look at the dog and i'm like hi there you know how are you doing please don't move and <laughs> the dog went <laughs> <laughs> and so i stepped on its leash and i got its leash oh and then nicely done. another person that was because i wasn't like calling the dog's name but that's how you know but that's how i accomplished it and another person next to me was calling the dog's name and as I gave the leash back to um, the person who had lost this dog she said to the other person thank you 
Nice. And complete, basically completely ignored me. <laughs> and oh. I was, what I, a, it was what like, a weird, what, the, what a strange interaction. Okay. Hmm. It was very bizarre. Anyway. That's very weird. But you know what this means? Mm. It's time for us to play our new favorite game. Guess what dog breed it is based on Melissa's impression of the dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to guess Ed from Lion King. <laughs> Wrong. Thank you for playing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> What's your guess, t- uh, Tyler? Okay, I'm going to guess it's a smaller breed. No big? Oh. Is it an Alaskan Malamute? I'm going to guess Boxer then, which was my original thought. Oh, no. It was a big fluffy dog. Uh, oh. So, uh, is it an Alaskan Malamute? Something like that. Ah! <laughs> But it wasn't Ed from Lion King, so you can take that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. All right. So that happened in Central Park this past summer. Uh, oh, it was in the... No wonder. People are weird. Like, Central Park is like a nexus of just bizarre behavior. I don't know what to tell That's you. Funny. Like, it's truly, I would say, almost cursed. Um, but not like evil. It's just like weird as shit. Yeah. Um, it's a big park. Yeah, big park. So she's almost catching the dog. Dog runs away. She, she bumps oh, yeah. into. She bumps into her old classmate. We've all been here. Yeah. Um, just a refresher. Mama Kutsi has like the record for like the highest. Um, mm. She had the highest grades. Yeah. Uh, from yeah. Secretarial College. Yes. And this woman she runs across has like a 43%. Yeah. And yet, like, has like a really successful job, like working for, I forget who, but like some businessman, I want to yeah. say. Yeah, sure. Like, she just says a businessman. Yeah, buys her like... It Was it a really... Gucci bag? It was the, the ones that I like, or was it was... a Michael Kors? It was I the one was that looks like this? Dolce & Gabbana. I don't know the... I love that you're both looking at me. Um... <laughs> Please. Because <laughs> sexism. <laughs> Someone. I don't remember the logo. If it was two... It was like it was two like little C's. Yeah, like a little... If it was two C's, that could be Chanel. <gasps> Chanel. Was it? It was. Okay. It was a Chanel bag. Which, by the way, has had to be like 80% of the budget for this episode. I'm kidding. That's shame. <laughs> I'm kidding. It was a very well produced episode. It was. The whole series is great. It's HBO. They got that HBO and BBC money. And also, unfortunately, Weinstein money. Yeah. yeah. That was a little okay. weird to see in the credits. But yeah. I mean, it was 2009. And they were in Botswana, far away from Harvey Weinstein when they shot this. Yeah. This, film, this, this film, the entire series is filmed entirely in Botswana. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Way to go. Way and, I mean, Harvey Weinstein's not in it. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Lots of wonderful people are. Oh, uh, so, she's going home, right? She goes home to visit her husband? Brother. Brother. Um, Who's sick in bed mm-hmm. while on couch. Which is where I like to be when I'm sick. Uh, Agreed. Yeah. He's very, very sick, though. Um, unfortunately. Yeah. And he says something... It's not revealed in this episode or the next. Yeah. But he's, like, not doing well. Yeah. yeah. And he says something wild, which is, I need meat. I need to eat meat. I'm like, where's that coming from? I don't... I've never heard... Eating meat being good for when you're sick. Oh, I. I eat meat. Like, I crave meat. When you're sick? Yeah. Oh. Well, just in general. In life, I just. I really like my jerky. Mm. I like sausages. Mm. I like a good burger. Mm. Some nug nugs. <laughs> some hot Mickey dogs. <laughs> what, 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 not, what are nug, nug bugs? Chicken nuggets. nuggets. Yeah, chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggies. Chicken nuggies. Chicken nuggies. Yeah. Chicken nuggies. Okay. I like a big chicky from uh, McAdee's. Um, here's the, my thing. Um, and maybe I've told this story before on the podcast. <clears throat> Forgive me if I have. I once saw Tyler eat mm, six hot dogs, four in one sitting, two later on. It was 
miraculous. <laughs> All before performing Shakespeare, which I don't know if you know that there's a lot of words in Shakespeare, and so... <laughs> Not from my character. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> you got him. Uh, but, you know, if you have any sort of digestion issue, you know, you can miss a syllable. Yeah. You don't want to be burping through Hamlet. <laughs> to be your... <laughs> 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 uh, oh, dear. Uh, yes, I just... <laughs> Yeah. Craving meat is all I was gonna say. Yes, <laughs> it's craving that meat. He's hacking his laughing at that, but we have that established. Um. Um, but I think then we jump to the next day with the no, no. Well, we gotta talk we, about yeah, yeah. I missed a bit when they were handing out the leaflets. Oh. We're jumping back, I believe. Because Mara Monte is like going around and then she finds a woman crying at a cafe. No? Yes. After that, yeah. We find her crying at a cafe and she offers her tissue and she's holding one of the leaflets. Yes. And then she comes in. No, they talk right there, right? About yeah, the Yeah, they case. talk right there a bit and then she, she does eventually come to the office. It, yeah. She does eventually. But the basically what happens is that this woman... Um, says that her husband, who used to be a womanizer, you know, but has reformed his ways, he is a born-again Christian, but he is suddenly missing completely. Like, yes. he, is, yeah, he has disappeared. Started up with an uh, apostolic church, which I had never heard before outside of the Nicene Creed, which is said by Episcopalians. Mm. Oh, okay. It's also said by Lutherans and okay. um, most Protestants. Yeah. Yeah. Fun fact. <laughs> That's good to know. Yeah. I, I like never saw an apostolic church before. Yeah. Like, as like Baptists a structure. Do it too, yeah. But, yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, it's just something like the Episcopalians. Like we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And yeah. We say the rest of it, but mm-hmm. yeah, I've never mm-hmm. uh, out of that have never heard of apostolics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think I had heard it, of it just like a little bit here and there. But at any rate, he does start up with uh, with that church, and she is now immediately worried that he has gone back to his womanizing ways, and that he has left her for a young lady in, mm-hmm. in the church um, with better blankets, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so she hires Maramotswe to figure out what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So they find the dog. Yeah, Wellington comes in with the dog. Who? The dog is dirty as I don't know what. Yeah, looks rough. Have you seen Black Cauldron? No. Yes. He looks like Black Cauldron character. Y- oh, Yuri, gosh. Yuri. Um, Gurgi. Gurgi. The Which, monsters and crunches. Uh, yes. Yeah, it sounds I like love. Gollum. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like Gollum. Yeah, absolutely. He looks like Gurgle. Yeah. Oh. But yeah, the dog is a dirty, he's a dirty little dog. <laughs> dirty little doggy. <laughs> Very cute. Stop using your sexy voice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi, Tyler's mom. Um, <laughs> so the dog's dirty, and then he's like, oh, I was alone and hungry. And this that is after. <laughs> this is what the dog says? <laughs> this is what the dog said. The boy says for the dog, he. <laughs> Um, but before this, a little bit, uh, she'd gone around to the churches and there's no dice. Oh, okay. And then someone says he got raptured, essentially. Yeah. And then the next day. This is crazy. <laughs> hey, it's only crazy until it happens to you and then it's not so crazy. Yeah, you know, I'm so, saying like it's 2009 and like that wasn't the case yet. Oh, yeah. We, everyone had already here. been ready. Yeah, it was 2012 when we all got raptured yeah. or not. So we're here. So <laughs> I have a fun story about that later. Okay. <laughs> um, but someone then leaves all his f- garments on the stoop for Mauro Motswe as well. And yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, Peter, the, the mm, yeah, church guy. She ends up going to the pastor. Uh, yeah. Not the rapture guy, but another church that is mm-hmm. down by the water. If that's any indicator for where this is going. <laughs> um, she speaks to him, and he, you know, is just 
you know, being very vague in the way he speaks. Mm-hmm. But, like, essentially just kind of shoes her off. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, the clothes are dropped off the very next day. Yeah, the dog, and then the boy says, alone and hungry. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she's like, I got it. And then this next scene, do we get to the dentist again? Not yet. We get to uh, JLB's Speedy Motors garage. Yeah. Yeah. And I would like to say here, I am so sorry. There are three plot lines going on in this this episode. There are three mysteries. There's three cases. It's kind of a, a lot. As is often the case with this series. Yeah. Yeah. There's just a lot going on. So I'm sorry we're all over the place, everybody. Yeah. I mean, we do have the dog now. We have found the dog. Dog's the dog done. Case is one closed. Well, the dog is still with her. She has not returned the dog yet, and that no. is important. Yes. Um, so you go to the motor, motor city. Go down to Detroit. <laughs> and I actually forgot. Like, I, I am wrong. Yeah. We do get Mabra Motswe before this bit. She does... Uh, Surveil him. Yeah, trail. Trail trails him. Yeah, yeah. Trails, trails the dentist. the dentist and finds that he has gone to the border mm-hmm. of South Africa. Yes. Um, and then next we find out that the dentist's car is in the garage that is owned by JLB, mm-hmm. who is such loved a dear. this man. And he gives this monologue about how he can read a man by his car. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it's so well done. Yeah, it's really brilliant. But essentially, we find out that, like, only one person, like, drives this car. Only one person, like, really has been in this car. Like, there are Mm -hmm. no passengers ever in this car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Spooky. Which is, yeah. And this guy, uh, so JLB says, this guy will do anything for money. He is all about that cash. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, like, I think, like, the, like, engine was, like, pretty worn, and, like, the tires have been, like, really, like, ridden hard or whatever. So it's, like, he, you know, will ride something to, like, the... Yeah. Yeah, what? Tyler? Will he ride something? Like, till the end. Like, yeah. Till, like, the... what, what are you implying? <laughs> I'm being nasty. Not in that way. I'm being nasty. Um... But does nasty she... little baby boy. <laughs> <laughs> and Melissa's walking Melissa out of the room. <laughs> I'm sorry, you have to deal with two rowdy boys today. Okay, now oh, it's just gone. us. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, does she solve the, the, the man or the dentist? As we all know, dentists aren't real. Um, <laughs> does she solve the dentist or the... The missing man. Oh, no, we go. First. We go to. Uh, we go to the field where she's like doing target practice. Yes. Uh, and we learn a little bit more about her backstory, and that her father, since he only had one child, uh, Mauro Matsui, that he decided to teach her everything that he would a son. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of like prepped her. So she's out there shooting the shotgun at like a bunch of like cans or containers. And uh, that's a good place to uh, take a little break. Sure. Before we get to the reveal. This February, Born Dance Company is hosting their annual fundraiser for the National Eating Disorder Association. The performances will take place February 28th and 29th at 7 p.m. here in New York City at the Secret Theater in Long Island City, accessible by the E and other trains, including the 7. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and I believe uh, not the M but the N I believe you can go to there too um, it's pretty close by yeah it's I like think it's two stops in to it's real close so it's close it's so easy to get in from Manhattan you could probably take the G I don't know where you're coming from but, but yeah it's really not far uh, into into Queens so don't let that scare you off yeah, yeah. suggest a donation of $20 but if you would like to uh, reserve your tickets in advance, visit 
borndance.com. B O R N E D A N C E dot com. We're born of the dance. <laughs> Uh, okay you can uh, also go to audible again audibletrial.com slash adc pod we also have a patreon pop quiz do you know what we do on our patreon tyler go we do things with voices and content oh. and we make more, more of it <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, go uh we have bonus clips from our yeah. episodes that we cut because they were too ridiculous and irrelevant for the or erotic oh yeah there is that actually yeah there's uh, a nasty <laughs> clip out there <laughs> as tristan slingshots a rubber band uh, i like but, to have fun but yes if you want to hear that nasty clip give us money <laughs> Thanks for essentially just stealing my answer and just changing it up a little bit. Uh, You're welcome. <laughs> okay. We also offer uh, early access uh, to episodes. So there's like already thing one or two that aren't like that won't be out for a while that are just available there. Um, and then also we're going to be doing like some audio commentaries eventually. And then also um, uh, there's... What was the other thing? All right. We're trying to get to, I think it's 10 donors a month, and then we're going to start doing this podcast weekly so yeah. rather than bi-weekly. So if you want more of us, you're going to have to pay for it. <laughs> Take that. <laughs> That's right. Us. I mean, it's the free market, quote unquote. All right. So uh, <laughs> we would also like to thank the Scavengers Network. Creator driven, community focused, treasured content. There you go. Um, there's uh, spooky spouses on there. There's historical hotties on which both Melissa and I have appeared. Tyler, get on it. Uh, it's not my podcast. They need to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then also the broads and the bees. Uh, Morgan needs a podcast. A bunch. And then they also do like a YouTube stuff. I don't with this visual thing. I don't get it. What the young people are doing. But it's very exciting, and lots of people like it. Yeah. A whole heck of a lot. Yeah, the yeah. internet's a fad. <laughs> he says on our internet based media this comes on the AM radio right uh, only FM my friend I will not be a part of this liberal hippie nonsense <laughs> a moment longer FM FM oh. forget me <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love the chaotic energy of 2020. <laughs> We're all too tired trying to follow everything happening in the world. <laughs> oh, our brains are melted and full of worms. Um, support the Patreon. Goodbye. We are back from that fixed <laughs> ad break. If you yep. couldn't tell by the overenunciation of her face. <laughs> so, so she's in the field shooting things. <laughs> and she gets an idea. She's a good shot as well. Oh, yeah. She realizes that they need to go down to the water in the middle of the night with the dog. Down by the river. Yeah. So they take the dog. Tie him to a little stake and sit off to the side. And Mama Kutsi is like, what in the ever-living hell is happening? (laughs) 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 And uh, uh, doesn't want to be fed. He wants to uh, hunt. Jurassic Park? No? Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. It just happened so fast. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And before the... Crocodile. Yes. Crocodile. Kind of tell the difference. Crocodiles are much bigger. They are enormous. They're bigger, and their teeth go on, I believe, the outside rather than the inside. Okay. Uh, like hmm. teeth. Um, toads only have teeth on the top, whereas hmm. frogs have teeth on both. Okay. Huh. Watch a lot of PBS as a kid. <laughs> Turns out. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, before this crocodile can get the little dog, uh, <laughs> we just 
such a so nuts. What are you saying? <laughs> to tie up a stranger's dog and be like, yes. <laughs> Come feast. <laughs> like, the dog is like, Ugh. Yeah, the dog is not into it, it turns out. <laughs> and Madame Momoto even says, it'll be useless for once in its uh, useful for once in its life. And I'm like, dang. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I remember, because this is part of... I. The stories that are featured in here are part of the book that we yes. read yeah. last yes. year. Yes. And I remember this part mm-hmm. in the audiobook. And, dear listener, I cannot handle anything bad happening to dogs in movies. It is a personal trauma thing. Mm-hmm. And I was very, 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 very nervous. But fortunately, <laughs> this is going to sound awful now. She just shoots the, <laughs> the crocodile instead. <laughs> now. What if it would dissuade your fear even further, Melissa? Mm. It's clearly a CG croc. It's the most CG crocodile I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I don't know. I've seen stuff some, on sci-fi. Okay. You've seen some pretty <laughs> CG crocodiles. I've seen some oh, CG. Oh, I take it back. If you, there's an episode of The Flash with Killer Croc or whatever their equivalent oh, is, yeah. King Shark versus like. It's bad. Anyway, she shoots the crocodile. And also, the CG in Jumanji was pretty on par. Like, 95 Jumanji. Yeah. It was pretty on par with mm. the CG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, she shoots the crocodile. Bang. The dog's fine. Yay. Uh, I'm fine. And <laughs> We're all fine. How are you? Uh, and then she sticks her hand in the inside yeah, of the crocodile. Giant knife out of her bag and is like... <laughs> Mama Kutsi is horrified, and Mama Ramonsoy is just like, do 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 do, opening up this crocodile. Oh look, I, 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 <laughs> it made me so mad. <laughs> Mama Ramonsoy has the nerve to like dig into this crocodile. <laughs> Pull something out. It doesn't even look at it. Just shoves it in Mama Kutsu's face. It's like, what is this? <laughs> she's so disgusted with what's going on with her hands. And she's like, tell me. And she's like, it's rocks. And she throws it on the ground. <laughs> then she pulls out a bike pump. Yeah. And she's like, it still works. And she almost hands <laughs> And then thinks better of it. It's, it's it is side. It's so funny. But then she finds the watch of the... Uh, so when the uh, uh, clothes were delivered of Peter, the missing husband, um, the watch wasn't there. And that's why his wife was convinced that it, he was um, mm-hmm. cheating on her. But yeah, no, he was just eaten by a crocodile. Yeah, and the crocodile wakes up and he turns to Mauro and he goes, this watch. I've been in my gut for three years. <laughs> just kidding. The crocodile is dead. <laughs> yes, it's very dead. Uh, at one point... <laughs> Makutsi was like, how do we make sure it's dead? And my room was like, it's not moving. I'm like, shoot it again. (laughs) You can just do that. Yeah, I was watching uh, it with my friends Tony and Ross, and they were both just like, double tap. Double Double tap. tap. (laughs) Double tap. Okay. So they figured out that mystery. And they tell... uh, They tell the wife. The wife, and she's like, well, I'm glad that he was eaten by a crocodile instead of was cheating on me. Which mood... To yeah. be quite honest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think Cardi B once said... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm going to pull up the lyrics. You guys talk. Okay. So then they saw they saw the next crime, which is the fact that uh, at one point, Maro Motze, uh goes to the border and sees um, two men that look identical switch out cars. Yeah. And then come back. Mm-hmm. So she's figured it out that they are twins. Yes. One is a normal freaking dentist, mm-hmm. good at his job. The other one is not. And when she goes to confront him, he's in the middle of an operation, and there's just blood everywhere on this patient. It was more horrifying than the dog or the crocodile thing to me. Yeah, there it was, was so much blood. Even Steve Martin was like, you're being too cruel. Um, it reminded me of a bit that you used to do in your stand-up. Oh. Uh, the Lewis Black as God. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. 
If you would like to know more about that bit, subscribe to the Patreon <laughs> and I'll make Tristan record it. <laughs> oh, material from three years ago. That's all what a comedian wants to do. That's all. <laughs> I remembered it. Oh, well, that's fair. So she confronts this man and he's like, good, you can't prove it. But he's brought in um, the hairdresser and JLB yeah. as like backup yeah. <laughs> to look like police officers. And they're both wearing sunglasses. It's so fun. Yeah. And she's like, there's police officers out there. And he's like, oh, prove it. And she's like, let's go talk. And she's like, oh, da, 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 never mind. Uh, and then she gets him to confess. And then they go and they take him to the police station across the border. Well, into South Africa. Actu- um, just Cardi B order. first, yeah. Oh, not even Cardi B. I'll, I'll get to that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, she essentially just like makes him sign over his business to the receptionist who is getting her mm, license. Mm, mm, mm-hmm. And then she leaves a tip for the South African police because she uh, doesn't want a scandal in Botswana. Yes. Yeah. Because people are afraid enough of dentists. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And we get, like, uh, before he's caught, we get a scene. It's not really important to the story, but it's like this cute, like, fun little moment where JLB, and I wish I remember the hairdresser's name. I will find it's it. It's killing me. But they're outside, like, doing their duty, just standing by a car, like, looking menacing. Uh, and these guys walk past and throw a can on the ground. And Joby's like, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, you need to pick that up. And they, like, kind of laugh and keep walking. <laughs> and then the hairdresser... BK? Yes, BK! BK. BK goes over to them. And pretty much, like, you guys don't know who you're messing with. He is like, got, like, a reputation for brutality. You need to get that up right now. And they do. Like, they scare them yeah. enough. And they feel really good about, like, the job they're doing being fake cops, even though they have not said <laughs> a word to this dentist and cute. don't need to. Uh, also, while they're prepping, at one point when they're prepping them to be the police officers, Mauro Moto asked Mama Kutsi, do you feel menaced? Do you feel like you, they're supposed to be menacing? Do you feel yeah, menaced? Yeah, that's right. Oh, <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> you imagine Palpatine coming up to someone? Do you feel menaced? <laughs> 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 oh, it's me. So good. I'm back. Um. So also the dog. They do get the dog back too. Yeah. 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 Yes. Um, and then the guy drives across the border to go meet with his brother, and then the police get him there. Yeah. And then they go back to the agency, and Maramote pays Mama Kutsi, and she's like, are you sure? And she's like, let me drive you for your home. She's like, no. And she's like, mm, I'm going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and then they do. And she gets, um, and Mama Kutsi gets some curry for her sick brother. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. And she gets... Out of Marumasu's car, like, a house down from her actual house. Because yeah. mm. her actual property is, like, kind of run down. Yeah. You can tell that they're struggling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. hmm Yeah. And that's the episode. Yeah. Um, the Cardi B line mm-hmm. that I wanted to make sure I was accurate with is, mm-hmm. rather see you in a hearse than see you with some other bitch. And I feel <laughs> the same way. <laughs> It's not even with, it doesn't even rhyme. No, it's because it rhymes with the line previous, but it doesn't. Which is, which is what? Can you say, give me the couplet. Give me the couplet. Now you know how I get every day a foreign whip. Okay. It's an almost rhyme. Yeah, it's a slant rhyme. Yeah. Um, so what do you think about the episode? Great. It's very good. (laughs) (laughs) It is. <laughs> it's very good. I know. It's the kind of enthusiasm you're going to get from me oh, at I was gonna... 8 30 p.m. No. Oh, man. No, Never guys. Mind. It's not going to make any sense if I say it. We're going to cut this bit out. We'll see. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> so I was going to suggest that mm. we do, instead of mustaches, banana staplers, but we haven't gotten there yet. Okay. So. It's fine. We can do banana <laughs> staplers. I don't need to understand the banana staple. It is cute enough of a concept. Okay. Great. Okay. 
Uh, I would say a nine out of ten banana staplers. Oh, okay. Because there were three plots. I got confused. Also, the episodes are an hour. And so I it is a lot for Chiboy. Um, and that's all things that are like technical, not at all performance or story or characters and like everything else is perfect. That's how I feel. Everything but the runtime is perfect, <laughs> which is the opposite way of what I f- how I felt about Rise of Skywalker. Uh, you have the floor, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> I give it a nine out of ten as well. It's not my it's not my favorite episode, which we will we will hopefully get to. Um, yeah, uh, the performances really just make the show really what it is. Like they could not have cast the show any better. Oh, it's amazing. Even like the you know the boys that are on the bus, you know Wellington, and like some of like these you know background characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe Wellington. And most of, like, the extras or, like, the under fives that they get are people that just live, like, that they found while filming. Amazing. I love it. That's so great. Yeah. Uh, nine out of ten. It's it's real good, guys. Uh, I was watching it with my boyfriend, and he turned to me, because he had no idea what was going. Like, he came in from nothing. And he said... As we all do. <laughs> when you think about it, Melissa. <laughs> sure. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> But yeah, I gave him no context, just started watching this. Uh, he has seen it not at all before or read anything about it. And he turned to me after the episode and was like, that was very good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's stellar. I would say out of the, like, we'll see as we continue to watch the series, but like percentage wise, it has a higher, like my Rotten Tomatoes score is higher for this than it is for Poirot. Like consistently really? the quality is higher. Oh, yeah. Because like... Poirot is really fun, and, like, I love Poirot as a character, but, like, some episodes are, like, and some are, like, eh, and some are, like, wow, whereas both of the ones we've seen so far, and bear in mind, it's only been two, it's been the pilot and this, have been, like, nine out of ten. Yeah. Yeah. So. Mm. Yeah, I mean, but it is a bit difficult because Poirot has far more more seasons and episodes, so it's harder to keep, like, a consistent Mm -hmm. streak where Mm -hmm. I feel like It makes sense now that I'm thinking about it that this has a higher rating because I think because it's it's really consistently good because there's you know so few yeah. episodes of this particular series. Yeah, I wonder what it would have been like if they had gotten to like season four or five. Yeah. Sure, there yeah, and yeah. there's usually do ends up end up being clunkers, but it sure started out strong mm-hmm. and you know had the potential for to continue that way, unlike. The other thing I've just started watching, Star Trek The Next Generation, which I hear starts out really rocky and then gets great. Yeah. All right. All right. I think we've already ended the episode, in fact. Yeah, you just have to... Just like... You have to call this one, Doctor. Oh, oh. (laughs) Time of death. (laughs) I now call this meeting of the Amateur Detective Club to a close. I was born in the dark.